Okay, so we're finished with this picture, but if you like this type of picture, I, the original has been sold, but I wanted you to see, this was a painting we did on our website, and it was originally done by Mary Cassette. She was an artist that was an American, but hung out with Monet and those guys in right around the turn of the century, and so we have that as a complete, let me just kind of show it like this, complete um, painting of lilacs in this old window, which I thought was really pretty. The other thing that's on gingercooklive.gallery, if you're interested in flowers, I want to just move a couple here and show you. We've got, I love, this is one of my favorite ones with this misty background, and this is called the red flower. And believe it or not, this next one I want to share with you is, um, this is called uh, Rainbow Rose, and one of my students did this 30 by 40. It's absolutely fantastic large. This can be, um, you can do uh, the these either as individual lessons for download or part of over 275 lessons that we have. Here's another wild rose that I really like if you just want a, a flower, some flowers. Just beautiful single rose like that. If you want to just, if you're into painting flowers, we wanted to share a few of these with you. Some of the things we have on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. And incidentally, it's come to my mind that if you're uh, watching me on YouTube, and you have not subscribed to our channel, um, please do so. Did you know about 50% about of the people that view don't subscribe? We don't send you emails. Nothing terrible happens to you. It helps your artists, the artists that you love on YouTube. And that's all of us. If you love us, you like what we're doing, please subscribe. It makes a big difference uh, to how our videos are shown. And it makes it, you know, the more videos we have out there, the more viewers, it, 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 it all adds up to you know, helping people um, see what we're about, and this is what we try to do. So anyway, these red poppies are on our channel, but I've got some beautiful blushing poppies on YouTube. If you haven't seen those, look at our blushing poppies. Uh, if you're into flowers, and I think a lot of our artists are, uh, gingercooklive.gallery is the place to be. Here's our final painting right here. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll look forward to many more paintings with you guys, and remember, Share these videos, tell your friends, and thanks very much. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ginger Cook. Uh, John and I are on vacation, and we're uh, going to be gone for a couple of weeks, and so this is one of the videos that uh, we're putting up instead of the normal live classes we would do on a Monday or a Tuesday night. I'm not sure when this is going to go up, but I love the idea of this a white crockery jar and the lilacs and this one flower. I think it's really pretty. I think it's a neat idea. And I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this. This is on an 8 by 10 canvas. And what we're going to be doing is just do the background first, dry it, and then I'll show you very easily how to draw this on. So you need a traceable at all. I'm telling you this is so simple to draw on. You're going to, you're going to get this easily. And then I'll show you how to do these flowers. So, and this is a really, really easy lesson, though it looks complicated. I get this all the time. People say, well, I like Ginger's uh, tutorials, but they, the pictures are so pretty, but I'm afraid they're hard. And they're really, I break it down for you and really explain how to do it. I think you're going to get this easily. And it may just give you some new insight in how to paint in flowers. And let's go ahead and start with a canvas, a little 8 by 10 canvas. Now I've, I'm going to sand the front of it. Just, and I lightly knock off some of the um, um, the bumps, you know, this uh, gesso's put on with the machine, and I just want to kind of smooth this out a bit, not too much, just a very light sandpaper. I've, uh, I've sprayed water on the back, and you should hear a sort of a, kind of a drum sound, hear that? Let me put it by the microphone. When you do this, if your canvas, when you're doing this, doesn't sound like an Indian drum, then take a little water and just spray the back, okay? This will really, this, if it's tighter, it will be easier to paint on, okay? So, now, let's just uh, figure out what colors we're going to use. Um, pretty much are the same culprits that we always use. I'm going to move this out of the way. And we'll put out, um, we're going to have purple, cad yellow, medium, yellow oxide, a mixing white, titanium white, had red, medium, burnt sienna, magenta, burnt umber, thalo blue, and ultramarine blue. So I'm going to pause and put these out, and then we'll be right back to it with you. Okay, so you can see we have our colors out. Now we're going to put our 
canvas sideways and we're going to start with this deep dark background and it's a combination of cad red medium and dosmine purple a little ultramarine blue you take a fairly large brush i think this one will work let's make it a little bigger this is a number eight i think ruby satin silver bright brush i think this one's the same size but that one's a little well this is the same size we'll just use this one it's a little older all right, so purple, a little cat red medium, a little purple, and a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue. There we go. Here's our deep, dark, rich um, background. Very pretty. Like that. Down and across, down and across. See, I don't even like to mix the color on. I like the fact that the colors change a bit. I'm putting this on fairly thick. The canvas is not wet. Um, it was just not wet at all. There you go, down and across, down and across, down and across. Doop, 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 and make sure you don't have any high spots. Come on back up here and scoop up some high spots. Keep moving it down. Okay. Now as I get down toward the bottom, I'm going to in medium with that. I want this sort of almost a mahogany color. It's really pretty when you paint it like this. Cad red medium, you know, is such a great color. You'll see me use this all the time. It's one of my go-to colors now. It wasn't in years past, but it has been the last few years. Been absolutely one of my favorite colors to mix anything with. Make a great gray with that. Um, see, I want to put something underneath this. Kind of. See, where's that? Where's that paper? Here. A little piece of wax paper underneath this. There we go. There. Just painting all over the screen thing. It's kind of, it was kind of pretty before I started doing that. Okay, so now after I do this, I know that I want a table down here at the bottom, probably about three fingers up. So just sort of scrape across like that. See that? Just about three fingers, three fingers, three fingers. Then I'm going to change the direction of these brush strokes and bring them all across this way. Maybe take a little cad red medium and streak in here a little bit. This is sort of pretty to make this more of a table. There you go, like that. A little bit of that streaky stuff in here like this. Blend it out. Keep your brush kind of flat. There you go. And I could take, I think if I wanted this a little bit more scraped out, what I would do is I would just take a palette knife, maybe just uh, measure just a second. This is this is kind of a fun thing. I don't know if I've showed you that before. I guess it's about two and a half inches here. About uh, two and a half inches here. I think that was about right. Let me see. Two and a half is right there. Two and a half is right there. And then just put this up like that. Ooh, that's not even close, is it? That's close, and then what you do, just erase that. Look at that. Kind of cool, right? So that's a good way to, you know, kind of scrape out where you're going and then decide which directions your brush strokes are going to be. Like that. And then if you want to, now's the time to paint the edge with your extra camp, uh, paint. It would be a good time to do that. Just take whatever's left over on your brush like this. See? You don't have to get... There's usually enough paint in your brush to do this. And you're either going to put this down on the drain or you're going to... See, like that. And I haven't even put any water on this brush yet. This is just all that's left over. All that extra paint left over on this brush. I'm pushing fairly hard. Now, if I put a tiny bit of water on the brush, just a touch and tap it off, there's the rest of my paint that's coming out of this brush. A lot of times people, you know, you want to save money on paint, you know, start with small pictures, you know, don't do it 16 by 20 until you figure out how to do it, and um, think of stuff like this, and then go ahead and buy the better paint, because you'll, this will, you'll save a lot more money in the long run. Okay, so there's my, um, you know, get just a little more paint for the bottom of this. There we go. As you can see, that worked out pretty well, didn't it? Just 
can use these sound effects. Those are fun too. And of course you're going to have purple fingers unless you dry in between, but I don't have time to do that. All right, now I'm going to dry this really well with a hair dryer, or you could just go have lunch and come back. That would work too. Wipe off your um, ruler if you've been using it. Wipe it off. Okay. That's a measuring thing. Make sure that you've got your edges. Okay, because we're not going to come back to this background. This is it. So, you know, this is our background. All right, now this is pretty simple. We're going to pause and dry. Okay, so let's measure up. We, we want to be start our base about, um, uh, see, turn, turn the ruler where I can see it. It's about three inches over from the edge up here. See, like that, about three inches over. It's about a finger above here, okay? So I'm going to come over here about three inches, do about a finger's worth, put my first dot right here. Now, I'm going to come up. Let's just move this out of the way before I keep getting pain in my fingers. All right, now, I've got pain all over my hands now. Perfect. Love it. I have white knuckles, see, for putting, putting my hand in the paint. All right, now we're going to come up about um, uh, four and a half inches from the edge, like this. Four and a half inches from the edge. I'm just going to show you real quick how to do this. Four and a half inches. I'm going to put a dot right there and then I'm going to come in uh, three and a half inches straight in from there okay let's move this out of the way three and a half inches straight in here like that here's a little dot now this is the outside edge of my pot now my pot is at the bottom is two and a half inches wide Okay, like that. So you want to make sure you've got it kind of level, but it curves a little bit like that. And how wide is this at the top? It is two inches wide at the top, so that's going to mean it's going to taper a bit. So then if you do this, pretty much make sure you've rounded the bottom, and here's your, here's your pot. Now, this is just almost a question mark. Put a dot here and a dot here. Come out about two fingers here. That's about as far out as you're going to go. Come up and around like this, like the outside of a heart. There you go. Put the handle like that. Okay, so there's your handle. That's pretty easy. Now we're going to come up here and about to three fingers off toward the left we're going to start here and I'm going to make a letter U like that okay and then just do some dots like this for our flower for now okay so that's um, I, so if I know what that's going to go then I can go ahead and draw in some petals like this coming up like this okay so there's there's the petals on this first flower we don't really see a stem. And that's all we're going to draw in for now, because that's kind of what we need in the white colors. So let's come back to our painting now. Taking a little ruby satin silver angle brush. This is a, I'll measure it, because the writing really comes off fast on these, and I can't even tell you what it is anymore. It is a um, half inch angle. All right, now I'm going to start with white and a little tiny bit of yellow oxide, like less than 1%, a little bit of burnt umber, less than 1%, make kind of a dirty white color like this, and I want to just paint over my canvas. Now look, I've got about that much, I need more paint. So now I'm going to come up like this. This is just, and then as you come down here, use the angle of your brush, you guys, when you're using an angle brush, if you're coming down, the long end is facing up. All right, it's real important to know how to use an angle brush. They're, they'll become your favorite brush if you use them right. Okay, there we go. That's just a little bit of this sort of a darker color here. And it's straight down like this. Make a little bit more of this color. 
or this off-white color. And it's okay if some of the canvas shows through, it makes the pot look a little older. So don't worry about that. I'm going to go right over the chalk like this. Now, a little bit of water on my brush, wipe it off because it's starting to dry out. So things flow just a bit better. Okay, now using just the angle, I'm going to come up here right over my chalk. Spin it around and pull it back down like that. Pretty easy, right? Just like that. Okay, so we've got the first layer of our pot in, and then we'll have to dry it. So let's do the same thing with our flower. Let's come up here, put our flower in. We're going to kind of do it in sections. Let's see, I think what I need to have is a little tiny bit of water that I can get. I need a little tiny bit of water on my brush. If I spray a little bit on the right there on my palette, that, that will allow me to, to do that. Now here we go, here's this flower. We haven't put any shadows on it yet. Let me kind of a little bit of space. Let me take a little more white, make it a little bit brighter in here so I can tell the difference between what we just painted. Okay. There we go. Very simple white flower. Make sure that that little outside edge is a little taller. Not necessarily want it all that pointy, but there we go. Okay, so there's our, that's our kind of our underpainting for the flower. Now, let's make that a little bit rounder here. There we go, so round it up a little bit. Here's some white. I'm going to put a little more white right here on the outside edge. I know I'm going to want that whiter. There we go. Alright, so there's our that's our flower. And then we have some shading to put on it. Now, I'm into the white. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Come on the outside top of this edge like this. Barely touch it. There we go. Just say that there's a little bit lighter highlight right there. Okay. Now, what else can I do from this before I have to dry it? Well, not much. We, 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 in order to get the shading on, now what we could do is take a little bit of dazzling purple and a little bit of yellow oxide and kind of gray this purple a bit and put it into our sort of beige mixture, okay? A little tiny bit of ultramarine blue, that's the red shade, okay? Now, I'm going to say that there's a little bit of a shadow on my pot going this way and uh, as I come down just barely touch it now wipe your brush right just kind of come up here now make some more of your take a little bit of burnt sienna and um, white okay mix it a little bit into that come up here like that now that's a slightly different color I'm going to say that's a little bit different Kind of putting it in here like that. Just make it kind of old and textury, you know. <clears throat> let's 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 make sure that it's more of a shadow on this side of where it's uh, curving around. It gets lighter as it as the as the base goes to the right. Got the light coming from this direction. Okay, and then this outside edge, of the pot is probably pretty white. So we're just going to light. We're going to get some white. I haven't cleaned our brush, so it's not going to be perfectly white, but we're going to kind of bring some stuff this way. A little bit flat. See, I'm going kind of flat. Just suggest some highlights on here. That's all you have to do. Just suggest a few highlights. And let's take a little purple on the inside with the handle. Make a little shadow right like that. Okay. That's good. You can see that. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see that well enough. Let me zoom in. Other way. Can you see how we did a little bit of the a little bit darker purple here on the inside, right in here like that. A little bit darker. Kind of that purple shadow mixture that we had over here. Like that. Okay. 
All right, so we've got that. Now I'm going to make a little bit more of a darker shadow, just the same colors that we did before. A little bit of the blue, a little bit of the yellow. Actually, make a little bit darker shadow. And right here, I'm going to say that there's a little darker shadow right here. Right up here, we're going to have a leaf. Okay. So that's cool. So you can see where we've got that. And this is, while it's still wet, so it's all kind of out of focus and fuzzy. And take a little bit of the light brown color. And on the outside of this, just do this light edge like that. Now, what you got to do, now this is tricky. I'm not trying to be tricky on you. Might as well show you. Pinch your brush after you rinse it. And then take it this way and bring that light in. Just so you barely see it, so you don't want to line. Just have a hint of a light edge there. Okay, so zooming back out. So there's our pot. Now, let's come along here with some cad red medium and a little bit of yellow. And let's come in front of our pot like this. Make sure you've got all the white off your brush so you're just using these colors. You can add a tiny bit of purple to that if you want. Okay, so I want to come in front of my pot here. And I want to suggest a little bit more of a, a little bit more cad red medium to that. Okay, just a little bit of a highlight on the table. Come in this way. And maybe yeah, back over here. I want to suggest that there might be you now it's a little bit of cad red. Just just I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit more and I want a little bit of this darker red color back behind our thing. Now you don't want a spot like that, so what you want to do is take a little bit of the purple and the blue color that you did before and soften that. Just kind of soften that so that it's sort of there, but it isn't. You know what I mean? You just want to suggest that there's a color there without getting too crazy. So this is how you kind of blend things in. Kind of put your background color back, okay? Because I know that this is so pretty. I'd like some, you know, a little bit brighter red around my uh, pot now. You know, like this. If I hold the brush and just put, now if I got it too bright, I can put a little purple back over it. Like that. So that I just want a little bit of color here. Up before I start my flowers, just up into my background. I had a little more in the other one, and I think it's pretty, but you can always add, you can always add something. Keep your brush kind of flat. Always add a little bit of color to your background. And you, if you get too much, again, you just put a little of the darker color around the edges and so make it look like a highlight. Okay, so you just don't want to get too crazy, but this is really an easy way to fix a background. Okay, now let's take a little of that color. See where we kind of scraped it out? We'll just do that. Here's where we scraped it out just a little bit. We'll just do that. There. Okay, so now we can see we have a table. Okay, and we, now what about this down here where there's a reflection? Here's what the mix, Here's where the mixing white can be very helpful, or your transparent white. What you do... I think I got this down a little lower in this picture than I did the other one, but it's still, you can put a little bit of the mixing white, come, leave a space, a little bit of a space, and because it's transparent, now, and just sort of follow the, the same angle, it's like a mirror, you can suggest that this pot is having a little bit of a, uh, Trans, you know, just a little bit of highlight on the table, which is going to be kind of pretty. don't think you'd see this, um, the handle, but there it is, like this. Okay, like that, and like this. Okay, so there's our pot on the table. Now we got to dry everything. Well, think this is dry? Yeah, that's actually dry, so let's keep going. Now we've done that, let's keep going. Let's come and add a little color to this. So we've, we've got the purple color. Now we're going to take a tiny bit of phthalo blue and a little bit, like very little, and a little tiny bit of yellow oxide. Too much. Let's just try that. More white. I want sort of a light blue color. Let's try a little more phthalo. I don't want that too green. All right, a little bit of cad red to it. 
There we go. I'm going to tone this down. I want this sort of gray color. Okay, now I want more white. So rather than go in the middle of this, I'm going to come over here and lighten it up here. People always want to lighten up the middle of the color, but it's easier to do that. Now, I want to come underneath here like this. Put a little bit of water somewhere here. So I've got a little tiny bit on the tip of my brush. I'm going to suggest there's a few little um, shadows on the inside of our flower like that. Not too much. Okay. Now I'm just going to take the brush and just tap that in. Just the edge in so it's not such a hard line like that. Let's see, a little bit more shadow right here. Okay. That's good. Put some good shadow on that. Let's see. Can we make it a little darker down toward the center? A little bit darker of the down here. Okay. Maybe down toward the bottom here. Okay, so now come back with a little white on the corner. And then just here, just on the corner of your brush, just do a few little white bits in here to suggest a couple more petals on the inside. A little bit of white right here on this edge. A little bit of white right here. A little bit of what more white right there. And you've got a pretty good little flower painted pretty fast. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and mix some greens. Well, no, we're going to have to do our lilacs, okay? So I'm going to say that my first bit of lilacs are right here. I'm going to just, this is almost like a horseshoe shape. You know, a croissant maybe. And then I've got one kind of up here like this, like a pine cone shape. And I've got one coming over here like this. And then one, there's like a stem here. And then this is coming over here like this and down like that. They don't go to a point, so please don't put them to a point. Don't do this, please. Okay, and then over here we've got a, just a couple suggested down this way. I'm going to change the shape a little bit than I did in the other one. Okay. All right, that's good. Then I've got another little tiny one just kind of hiding out here, kind of in a regular shape. That's pretty easy, right? Okay, so now... How to, how to do that? Well, we're going to switch brushes. I'm going to, these are all, this is all about little dots now, you guys. You ready? It's all about little dots. So let's find something we can make a little dot with. Here's a little tiny, uh, 3 8 inch, uh, angle brush. That would be good. What else have we got? We got anything else that would make a good little dot brush? Well, you know, you could just use a little brush. Well, no, it's not good. I want that one. She's going through all her brushes going, see a bright brush like this, that wouldn't be good. Let's see, what could we do? Let's keep going. This wouldn't work. It's like pulling out brushes like Goldilocks. Okay, what do I got behind this one? All right, let's see, what do we have behind here? here well, here's a small little, uh, ink, little dot brush like that. That's pretty good. Little zero, zero. So I'm going to take some purple right up in here like this, a little magenta. And some white. And I'm going to make my first purple color, kind of like that. Now I think I'll just scrape it up and use it right like this. This is a trick. We'll put it on your palette knife. Get a little thing. Start dotting in, dotting in your flowers. Now this, hold the brush if you can straight down, so it makes these little kind of dots. Okay. This brush needs to get boiled. I've got some loose hairs that are just sticking up places, and apparently you can put it in boiling water and then re-straighten it and then kind of put some soap on it to kind of make it sort of uh, stay like a gel. You know what I mean? The way gel might in your hair until it dries. Then you rinse the soap off and the brush still sticks. Okay, so I think I want a little more purple and magenta. I want this a little bit darker. Okay. Start with my darker colors first. 
All right, and don't worry if it globs on a bit. That's okay. We're using heavy body paint. Now I'm going to come up up there about this far. Remember, we're going to go over the white, so we're just going to put in this purple. I'm just going to touch um, the flower like that. I feel like I should have some music to play for this. You know, when I was a kid, we had lilac bushes all lined. The, we lived in Bellevue, my you know, on about 10 acres, and the whole driveway was lined with these beautiful lilac bushes. And in the spring, I mean, oh my gosh, they were so wonderful. So later on, I moved to Aspen, Colorado. I was a grown-up, you know, in my 20s, and I lived in this little condo. And the it's like only seven units, so we all kind of got to decide what to put in the gardens. And I decided I want a lilac tree in front of my house. And did you know it's like 10 years before the things bloom or something like that? I mean, it was incredible. And, of course, the growing season was much slower there in Aspen because the altitude was so high. There were lilacs, but, I mean, I moved by the time I ever saw any lilacs. I mean, these are some of my favorite flowers. I just love them. I think they're so lovely. Okay, so see, you've used all that paint up. Now I'm going to put some more on the palette knife. This is a good way, if you haven't tried doing that, using your palette knife. It was really pretty. Our house on Clyde Hill, we had an ocean view. Uh, not ocean, but we could see lakes, Lake Washington way off in the distance. And we were up on this hill. Clyde Hill now is in Bellevue, and it's very pricey, but in those days it was the sticks. And I used to have to take the school bus to my private school in, in Seattle, and it was a good hour and a half ride on the school bus. Talk about busing kids. And um, really nothing to do on the school bus. And occasionally my dad would take me to work. He was a judge. He would he would drive me to, um, on his way to work, he'd drive me to school. And, um, you know, which I greatly appreciated. And the thing about it was is that uh, we'd get there in about 45 minutes when he was there driving because he had these license plates that were AAA 100. And, you know, just that was his license plate number and he could speed do whatever he wanted the police people would just leave him alone put a little more magenta in some of this now change this up just a hair okay there we go a little more magenta and then he would tell me about his cases on the way to work and he'd say what do you think should happen he'd give me all the facts and he really gave me the most wonderful sen sense of right and wrong so I think he probably had a way of coaching this so that uh, I came to the correct conclusions. But I remember those times were really nice. We would I don't think any of the other kids ever got that experience of being able to talk to him about his work. Because he generally, sometimes he'd have to work when he got home looking up. Uh, we had a whole, he had a library and he had all his law books and he'd have to look up stuff. But um, basically, he kept his work pretty much to himself. Though his most famous case was, um, there was a lady that wrote a book called The Egg and I, and it was at, about a small town in Washington, and stuff that happened there, and the people of the town sued this woman because they felt that the book portrayed the characters in the town too closely, and it was damaging. You know, she kind of spilled the beans, basically, on these guys. A little bit more of this... Um, uh, let's see, let's fill this one out a little bit. Anyway, so they, he said they read the whole book in court, and it made the papers. It was quite a thing, you know, this this whole story. Because, you know, Washington State, not that much stuff happens in Washington State. There's not that many important people. And I don't mean to be unkind, but, you know, back then there was a few. But, you know, here was an author. That was a big deal. She was getting sued. It was very gossipy. I mean, you you got to understand, when I grew up, there were party lines on the phone. We lived out in the country. and If the neighbors were on the phone, then you had to get off. You couldn't keep talking to them, keep talking on the phone, if the um, neighbors were on. Now, look how fast that came out there. Isn't that sort of nice? Let's come up a little closer here with this. I know we're going to do some white over it. I'm going to bring this one out a little closer. I've got a little more magenta. Do you see the... You see the color change now? There's a little more magenta on my brush. I'm tapping that in here too. Almost pure magenta on top of this now in a couple places. Okay, just tap, 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 tap. Okay. 
just there we go. Now, if I get just pure white, now here's white. Okay, you ready for this? Now I'm going to just go into my white. I'm going to go straight down. I'm going to tap the light ones, highlights, and because the paint's still wet, okay, like that. There we go. I'm going to say that this is the roll the extra paint off and just go into the white. Here's the light part of my lilacs. And if it's if it's picking up too much of the paint, I'll have to dry it. In some places, this might be okay. Anyway, we had these party lines growing up. And uh, you had to get off. The neighbors would listen, and they felt it was their job. I'm not kidding you. They were listening for communists. And and to see if anybody in the neighborhood was a communist. during the McCarthy era. And... Um, you know, they felt it was their civic duty to make sure that we didn't have any traitors in the neighborhood. <laughs> I think about it now, it's hysterically funny. And there was this one woman who had this um, beautiful horse ranch uh, next door to us. And uh, she was Russian, I think. Or that's what they said. They called her the Russian. Who knows where she was from? Probably had an accent. Nobody had any idea. And... Um, See, now as I put a little bit of the light on this, and see, this is lightening up a little bit, see? Okay, so that's still purple, but it's a little lighter purple. See how I did that? I'm doing this. A very one little tiny brush at a time here, you guys. Just a little bit of white right here. I think I'm going to have to, probably, I've got this on pretty thick. I'll probably have to just dry some of this. Anyway, that was so funny, the the neighbors and the... I think finally we got a phone, but uh, that was the rule for the kids. If the adults, you could talk on the phone with your friends, but if the adults wanted the phone... On, and I think there was like four or five houses on our party line. And I don't know if that was... Um, if you could have... You know, if that was the only way you could have a phone, or that's just we were cheap and we all got part of that, or that's just how it was living out. Like We were considered the country. We crossed the floating bridge to get into Seattle go to school, you know, go to school. There was a public school, by the way, right up the street. By the, not that I couldn't have gone to school, right up the very nice public school. I did go there a couple of years. That's where I had the funny, crazy teacher that gave me the name Ginger. Had us out on the playgrounds in the playground of fourth grade looking for flying saucers. Had me terrified of things that flew overhead. Crazy, huh? Now, don't you think, aren't you just impressed with how fast this is going? You guys, come on. This is fun, right? I'm just tapping these in here like that using this little pointy brush. Tap, tap, tap. These sock folders will love this. People say, what's a sock folder? You know, I mean, those are people that are just basically very neat. All these little dots ought to just make you delirious. <laughs> okay, so let's come back over here. and We want some lighter stuff on these side of the lilacs like this and as I push in if I push in harder I can lighten up the side of the lilac without you know what I mean I can lighten it up a little bit if I push harder and if I barely push then the white just sort of settles so you're really almost plopping the white down you're just dropping it down here if you push real hard you'll change it and you can also come out into the um, area above the purple that you did and uh, come out a little bit here, like that. So anyway, that was our neighborhood. It was just, everybody knew everybody. It was very nice. And parents um, parents talked. You know, they called each other up and tattled on the kids, that kind of stuff. And <laughs> we, we all, you know, there was a lot of kids my age to play with. And... You know, even though I went to, you know, went to a private school, I still, when I came home on weekends, you know, I'd go out. And my friends would come over on Saturdays, and we'd play, and I had a pony, and we'd play Pony Express, and, and Cowboys and Indians. We Well, we'd watch, on Saturday, the rule was we'd watch TV, and then in the until about noon, you know, and it was all black and white, um, the Lone Ranger, Hoplon Cassidy, those guys, and then, and then we'd, kind of act out the stories, play cowboys and Indians, and, you know, we were into all my friends, you know, we had about six of us, we would all play, we'd all share the pony, and we really had, there were some great times, I have to tell you, my, my sister wasn't into horses, I don't know what she did, 
think she was just sort of bored. I was never bored. We always had things we could do. I'm going to just fill this out with a little bit of more magenta color in here like that. See? See how I'm just kind of getting our lilacs a little more magenta, I think, and white. Lighten this up just a hair. This didn't lighten up very much. Here come in magenta color, lighten up. There you go. All right, so you can see where we're getting the lilacs. Now, what about these right here? Oh, we didn't get anything about there. I think about this point, I've got to rinse my brush because it's picked up so much paint. Wipe it off, and now let's come back to our wipe off that palette knife and start again. Yeah, I'm going to get a little white on it. it. Looks a little contaminated, but not too badly. I want to get the top of this one. See that top? See the top edge has got to be white. Hmm. There we go. They were, and I may have talked about this before, but it's always so interesting to me. My, my mother, in those days, you know, I mean, they, there was a woman that lived, the, the man that lived up the road, and he was a multimillionaire. Everybody said so. You know, kids, you know what that means. But everybody said he was like the richest guy in the neighborhood. You couldn't see his house. It was all sheltered in all these acres, about 20 acres. And he got married. And my mother, I remember my mother referring to the woman that he married as a divorcee, the, a divorcee. That was the term, and it was such a, it was such a, um, an ugly word the way she said it. Now, you, you know, I mean, it was so funny that, um, and, and then, and I still remember as a kid her comment, um, something about he'll, he'll earn, she will earn every penny of it. And just, just, the jealousy, and that this woman was excluded from their circle of friends. Uh, they they all got, um, I think their name was Dyer, and they all got um, invited over to his house for the, to meet her. And of course, they all went because they all wanted to see her, but they didn't really want to know her. Talk about catty, really, <laughs> just. Okay, a little bit too much white on the brush here. Just a few more light dots on this one. Your know, acrylics dry darker, so you may think you're okay. But see how we've got these lilacs? And um, lightening this up a little bit. I think I need some more magenta. Now I'm going to just put pure magenta out because it's kind of mixed with my purple. Rinse my brush. Add a little more of the magenta to this. Here we go. See, see, I mean, when you have pure magenta, it's really pretty. Now, here we go. Let's just mix a little more of that color in. See? Look what happens when just a little color surprise here. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but just not even everywhere, but just, you know, give this a little life, you guys. Anyway, this is what I remember most about the, you know, growing up in the neighborhood and the, everybody talks about their neighborhood and what it was like to grow up and, my dad, um, we had a Jeep, and my dad used it, to, and he had, uh, I think it was like four lawn mowers that were hooked up somehow that he could pull behind our Jeep to mow our property, because we had about 10 acres, but we only, we had something called the lower five, which we didn't mess with, and then the upper five he had to take care of, and there were all these fruit trees. And uh, the boys, my brothers, all learned to, drive on this old World War II Army Surplus Jeep. So that's what it was, little Army Surplus Jeep. And uh, I'm seeing if I want to put any of this little purple in here anywhere. Not really, but just, just a couple places. There you go, it's inside of that flower. All right, now, what we have to do here, is I think what we should do here, and that is such a good idea, I'd like to bring, I didn't in the first picture, but I'm going to bring this lilac down over the top of this vase. I think that would look really nice. Just break that up a bit and just bring it down a little bit. Like that. I have to put some more white out. I'm, I'm all out. Okay, like that. Just going to say that's a little bit more over the top of this vase like that. Okay, so 
All right, there's our flowers. Ooh, we need some more magenta over here. Just a little more of that magenta color. Just on a couple of these on the ends, wherever there's a little bit of dark stuff. I'm going to bring that over here just a hair. Tap, 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 like a little woodpecker. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, I think that's pretty good. You can see how easy that went in there. Just, I think people think this is hard. It's fiddly. <laughs> it's fiddly. Just understand where the light goes. It's not freckles. There's a del de deliberate pattern between the light and the dark. And if you can figure that out, you're in great shape. Okay, let's pause and dry this, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so this is this is all dry now. Now we're going to switch brushes. A little brush goes in water. Okay, well, wait a minute. Well, first off, we've got to mix a color here. So let's uh, see where we got that palette knife. Now we need to mix some greens. I want you to see where we're at so far. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to mix some greens like that. For our, um, uh, so let's take some Thalo blue and some yellow. That's a pretty bright green. Okay, put a little purple with it. Tone that down just a bit. Why purple? Because uh, purple and it's made out of red and blue. So if it's up there, there. So it's a bright, still bright, pretty bright. A little bit more. Oh, let's put a little ultramarine in that. Kind of blue this up. All right, and a little more thalo blue. Let's just mix a nice green here. Okay. I want a little more thalo blue in it. Okay. Now let's try a little white in it. Just lighten it up just a hair. Okay. Just a hair. Okay, so this is sort of this blue-green color. Do you see it? Kind of see this. It's sort of this nice blue-green color. Now, what I'm going to do is take that little angle brush that I was looking for before. Tiny little angle brush. Here we go. Small one. That's not it. Where did it go? Small little angle brush. Uh, here's one like this. Here's a little uh, 3 8 inch angle brush. I'm going to take that green. And I'm going to say that I've got... Um, kind of flatten it out. And I'm going to just say that right here I have a green leaf. Like, right, like that. It's kind of curving. Do you see how it sort of curves like that? Alright, so there that, there's that one. And I've got one that's coming this way. Curving that off like that. And they're not very big. Okay. And um, let's see, we want one kind of under here, like that. So just one there, like this. And then maybe one kind of under this one. We're going to suggest we've got a leaf kind of curving up like that. And uh, you know what we didn't do, which I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and put my green line right like this at the top and bottom of my, kind of curve it like that. There you go. And my vase like that. There we go. Now, I'm going to put a little more yellow oxide with this color, just a touch. Move it out to the side like that, kind of lighten these front ones up. And now I've got I've got an interesting leaf pattern right here. If you think about it, it's going to come down here like this. And we're going to kind of cut off the top of our vase. More yellow oxide. And then I'm going to come this way, out this side, with one like this then this way. It's almost a three-point leaf here. Okay. Make sure it goes to a point. There we go. And then we've got one. Ooh, let's put a real pretty one right next to this one. Kind of a curvy one right here. Kind of, kind of go over there like that. There's a kind of a curvy leaf. Go right over my flowers. Okay, and let's see, I'm taking a little bit of yellow right while I can, just pure yellow. Go over the top of this. Just allow for that to have a highlight. Okay, like this. Alright, now, how about one up this way? A curve there, that's good. A little bit of more light one. And here's one up here like this. Okay, there we go. These the angle leaves are the angle brushes are perfect for this. Now I want a little light edge. Just into the yellow now, a little bit of a light edge on the outside of this. I'm trying to do some without having to 
dry it, may still have to. I'm going to lighten up this leaf here, pure yellow, lighten up this leaf. Okay, so starting to lighten them up here. That's your brush. I'm going to pull that in like this down to a point. Now, what do we got? We have, um, we had kind of a little stem that we're going to say is in here like this. Kind of this way. I didn't really put any stems anywhere. Put a little, maybe a little leaf coming up over the front of that flower like that. And we'll just add a little bit of yellow to it, coming like this. All right. So there, we don't talk about that flower either. Don't have to give it a stem or anything. Okay. There we go. Coming back with a little bit of yellow. There's nothing here. There's a little stem here on this one. Okay. All right. Now look at that. Isn't that just cool? I mean, look how fast that went in. Now, now when you're going to do a leaf on the bottom, this is really important. If you do it, let me just show you. If you have, this is the bottom of your table. If you do a leaf like that, it will look like it's, um, let me just move this up so you can see it. It will look like it's not laying flat. It has to be going sideways to look like it's laying flat. So if you want to say there's a leaf that fell down here on your table like that, they have to be laying flat. They have to be horizontal, okay? And, uh, you know, you could have like a couple of leaves, maybe one that's kind of hiding behind the pot here. I didn't put one there, but I'm going to put a little leaf right there too, just a lone little leaf there. And let's take a little bit of white paint, a little bit of yellow. Maybe lighten this one up just a little too much. Maybe more yellow. Lighten this up just a hair. Can I lighten this leaf up? Yeah, I bet I could. I probably should dry these and see what... probably need to dry those. But anyway, you can see where I put a few little leaves. Isn't that pretty? Now, they're lying on the table like that. Okay, so... If I wanted to make this table look shinier, we could just add a little bit of a reflection under them, too. That would be interesting. But Okay, so now I'm going to dry the leaves, and then we'll come back and we'll add some highlights and a few little flowers down here, and we'll be done. Okay, so let's bring this down here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, Okay, and I'm just going to add like a little light Highlight on this leaf here like this. This one. Maybe on the top of this. Just brighten these up just a hair. Kind of like that. Just kind of bring them forward just a little bit. There we go. Like that. It's kind of a nice, it's a very nice design, isn't it, with these flowers and everything? Now, let's take our little pointy brush we had before. And let's put a few little of these. Uh, do them like, they're really like little, um, like little X's, okay? If you're doing individual petals of a lilac, they're like little X's. But again, you've got to keep them sideways so they look like they're on the table. Okay? Here's one. Okay, make it a little bit more purple. White here, kind of out of the color, right color here. I'm going to put a couple there and I'm going to put a little more purple, a little magenta, maybe white. Okay, we're just going to say that there's a couple of these down here like this. Just, you could, they don't have to be much, right? Here, let's just say that there's one couple right there like that. There's our little flowers. I think that's kind of cute. Let's see, I think I'm all out of white and I've been resisting putting more white out. And this, this probably happens to you sometimes. All out of white. I'd hate to put any more white out because I'm like I'm like 99% done. 
but still I need some white paint and you know just take go ahead and put a tiny amount out just don't worry about it just a little bit just make sure that you keep up with your you know colors there we go don't want that too bright but there's a couple little flowers down there now I'm going to look and see do I have enough white here's some white now We've dried everything, so if I go into pure white now, for a few little dots of something in a couple of places, and maybe shape something that I didn't have shaped quite right, now's the time to do it. For instance, there's quite a bit of white right up here in this part of the lilac, right up here like this, on this one. My white. Really just drop it on there. Okay, there, just needed that one a little lighter. Maybe a little section right in here. I've got a beautiful painting by Mary Cassette of Lilacs. I'm going to go show that to you in a second. What, on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. And Mary Cassette was, you know, one of the American artists that hung out with the Impressionists. She was friends with Monet and Renoir. You know, women got no traction in those days for art. You know, good luck, you know. But, we remember Mary, and we're very proud of Mary, because she really made some inroads into female art thing. Because you try to think about all the women artists you know, and I think maybe some of you can name two or three names. Not very many, huh? And yet, you know, really through time, women have been the artists. You know those little tapestries that are hanging in the castles with all the beautiful big tapestries that maybe, you know, a, a whole group of women would work on all winter long, and they're just absolutely perfect. And there's some, uh, you know, the vestments that the priests used to wear for mass and had these uh, fantastic embroideries and so forth. What do you think did all that stuff? You know, I mean, there were, you know, but, you know, nobody ever hears about women being... um you know, in the forefront of art, and they were. They just, they're, they got obscured, it was obscured. Okay, that's all. It was just obscured, which is a shame. So hang on a second, I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to pause, I think I should, I can sign it right here. And I want to show you, just before you go, I want to show you this Mary Cassette lilac picture. And just uh, feel free to come over to our gallery, gallery. you know, you can be a member for just, a ten dollars, you know, nine ninety five for a week, and there's over. Did you know nine hundred? Not just each lesson. It, you have access to over nine hundred, two hundred ninety five lessons. I promise you that's um, um, all for that one price for the week. And our members, you know, under thirty dollars a month, um, you know, have you know, get personal art coaching, and we give you, give our members uh, at least um, uh. Oh, let's see. At least um, just lightening the, this little stem here. At, at least at least four to five new uh, videos every um, every week, uh, every month. Four to five new videos. And the reason we do so many is not everybody wants to paint the same thing, and we understand that. Okay, so I just um, I'm gonna go back and do a little a few little dark areas too, just a little bit of shadow areas. I think we did pretty good with that. There's our leaf. I have a couple little shadow areas, and I've got to add right here. But let me let that dry. I'll be right back. <laughs> 